Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, Coach Terry on, uh, you know, look up on the board. I had no idea, but that's his 200th win. Uh, congratulations to him and and uh, what he's done in his career. So, uh, you know, kudos to him and, and 200. It's a heck of a milestone. So, congratulations to Coach Terry and congratulations to Texas. I mean, they, they were ready to play, uh, you know, losing three out of four. You know, we talked about with our team, you know, it's uh, – you know, teams that play with that sense of desperation uh, usually come out uh, hungry. And they certainly came out hungry and they're ready to play. And consequently, uh, whatever it may be, from my standpoint, I didn't have our guys ready to play. And uh, that's on me. So uh, I'll get, get with our coaching staff and figure out what we can do differently. But uh, uh, credit to Texas with their approach to the game. And, and wow, did they shoot that ball. Josh, two-part question for you. When you guys are able to beat them up in Morgantown, you know, DeSue and Ace Smith combined for 50, but you guys are able to limit the rest of the, the team. Just kind of what was the difference tonight and what you saw out there? And second part of that question, what does Weaver kind of bring to their lineup? Uh, I talked all week about uh, Kendall Weaver and, and what he's bringing. You know, the biggest difference, people, people kept asking me, whether it be on a radio show or press, or, or they said, what's the difference? You know, we were adding Jesse into the equation, which wasn't there in the first uh, first game. But uh, uh, I was giving Kendall Weaver all the credit in terms of the way uh, he approaches the game. And uh, you look at his stat line tonight, you know, 13 points, six rebounds. He just makes so many hustle plays, four assists, one turnover. And uh, his, his energy, his enthusiasm, his tenacity uh, really brings them an edge that, uh, you know, he's really – uh, brought them to a different level, and I think uh, you know full credit to him and, and his approach to playing the game of basketball. That's the way it should be played. Coach, uh, they were what, fifteen of thirty-two from threes. You know, when they're shooting like that, w what can you do defensively, or is it sometimes you know they're just just hot and, and we can't do anything about it? Yeah, I mean, I've seen games like this over the years where you know you see a couple go down. Uh, you know, we weren't – our closeouts weren't very good. You know, we were closing out with – you know, we weren't closing out with high hands. So, they were getting clean looks. And, and as much talent as Texas puts on the floor, if you give them clean looks, uh, they're going to knock them down. Uh, so, some of that's on us in terms of our closeouts and our, and our approach. But, uh, you know, certainly, you know, there, there's games like that to where, you know, a couple guys see one go down and, and uh, it just opens the floodgates. And it certainly felt like it opened the floodgates for them tonight. Coach, uh, scouting uh, Texas this week, did they show you anything different in, than what you saw on film? Was it what you were expecting? You know, no. I mean, not that I, I didn't see anything different. Um, you know, they did a good job early with, with the Sioux, picking and popping, and, and our ball screen coverage was not good there. That's really the shots that uh, when I talk about, you know, they got open looks. I think they had three or four uh, early shots on that pick and pop with the Sioux. And we didn't have an answer for it in terms of our ball screen coverage. Um, you know, that was, you know, credit to them and seeing that and, and, and attacking Jesse from that angle. So, um, you know, Jesse didn't play in that first game and, and they went right at him and, and understood that they had an advantage there in that ball screen uh, pick and pop. Yeah, Josh, I don't know, about 10 teams are separated by like two games in the lost column. Uh, how do you separate the top teams from everybody else, or do you see much differentiation between the teams? Uh, more than anything, it's the consistency. You know, the teams are going to lose in this league, and, and I, you know, we, we go into this league thinking, you know, the, the winner might have six or seven losses. It's very, very, very feasible for that to happen. Um, but the best teams, you know, don't carry one loss into two. You know, they, they quickly fix, you know, their issues, and, and they bounce back. And, uh, you know, in this league, if you get down on yourself, uh, there's, no, there's no layups in this league. Uh, you you got to be ready to play each and every night. And like I told our guys, you know, do me a favor. You know, this is, I'm a, this is on me. I didn't have you guys ready to play one way or another. I didn't have you guys ready to play. But we have to quick turnaround and we go play a really good TCU team in Fort Worth on Monday. So if uh, you start hanging your head and, and, and uh, you, you can't understand how to flush it and learn from your mistakes, uh, you know, on a quick turn like that, uh, two, one loss can turn into two real quick. But even with your record, you know, you beat Texas, you beat Kansas, and you showed up and played some big games. So it's 
No, I mean, there's certainly home court advantage in this league is as good as any, probably any league in the country. You know, trying to figure out how to win on the road is, is the challenging part. And, you know, I've been around this league since I was a little kid, and it, it always seems like the, whoever can hold serve at home and, and uh, you know, at worst split on the road has a, has a chance to win this league each, each and every year. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.